Hello, this is Jordan. This video is being recorded on the afternoon of Monday, December 19th, 2022. Thanks so much for joining me today. And in this video, I am going to talk about cycles. Uh, this is one of my least favorite topics when it comes to te technical analysis. Um, I know cycles are a part of technical analysis, but they're so subjective that um, I, I don't consider them like a key part. Of, of technical analysis. Um, but, um, you know, they're, they're right now, uh, and, and I've seen this in the last year or so, I mean, there's a cycle floating around on Twitter and I've gotten questions about it. There's a 30 year cycle in gold supposedly, and you know, this is bearish. And so I, I just want to talk about that and some other cycles, but also in the context of um, you know, why you really shouldn't worry about what these cycles say and, and nor should you care about them. Uh, the only reason is unless they help you make money. I mean, if you're using whatever cycles and that's helping you make money, that's great. You, you always have to stick with what's helping you make money. But if they're not he helping you make money, then this is really something that you shouldn't worry about it. And the other thing I'll mention, you know, people, who, the cycles analysts, the ones who are successful and they've achieved, you know, some rank or designation in the technical analysis world, they tend to use cycles with other indicators. They use real analysis analysis with it to really substantiate what the cycles are saying. You know, in other words, they're also looking at objective things like price, trend, volume, intermarket analysis, etc. And so, you know, one of my issues, not to belabor the point, but one of my real issues with cycles is that the people who use cycles they're really they really have a religious devotion to it and they think that the cycle itself is more important than the actual market and that's where the where the fatal mistake is the market is paramount you have to read the market itself and so the problem with a lot of cycles guys is the cycle is more important than the market and they're reading the cycle and it's whatever the cycle says and then the market is secondary. So, you know, that diatribe aside, let me get into some examples here uh, and some more analysis. So the supposed 30 year cycle for gold, and I've put it on this chart here, there's a chart of gold, gold stocks in the middle, that's a Barron's gold mining index, silver at the bottom. And um, you know, so you have the low in 1970, the low in 2000, even though the low was in 99 and 2001. So that's, you know, 29 years or 31 years. Um, and you know, you had the major peaks in 80 and, uh, 2011. So, you know, there's roughly 30 years between major lows and major peaks. And so I guess that's the real basis for this. And it's thinking that, okay, well, the next low has to come, you know, roughly 30 years after that 99 or 2001 low. So the next major low in gold, and you're not going to see a real bull market kick off until the end of this decade. Um, now, I think one thing that might substantiate that prediction, and, um, and by the way, I'm going to talk about the one cycle that matters. It's not this cycle. Um but if there's a second cycle that matters, it might be, if you look at inflation, inflation tends to be a 30 year cycle and there's major peaks every 60 years. So there's major peaks around the civil war, 1920, 1980, and then 2040. I mean, you look every 30 years, 1920 was a peak, 1951 commodity price peak, of course, early 1980s, 2011. So that cycle is telling you and I, I do think that's, that cycle itself has some merit. That cycle's telling you that around 2040 could be the major peak of this inflationary cycle. And so I think that maybe is pr providing some evidence that there's a 30-year cycle and that therefore, you know, because there's a 10-year cycle in gold, there's a 10-year secular bull cycle, then the, the real next 10-year bull cycle is not going to start until the end of this decade. So I think that's where the 30 year cycle comes from. However, I mean, there's first, the first thing here, there's two real problems with this purported cycle. Number one, just look at the gold stocks and silver, <clears throat> excuse me. Their major lows were well before 1970. 
if you look at the chart of the gold stocks of Barron's mine, uh, gold mining index, you can see it really started to take off before 1960. I mean, the S&P TSX gold index, that had a clear bottom in 1957. So the bull market in gold stocks, it didn't start in 1970. So that went up for at least 20 years. And you can see the, you can see the same thing with silver, which made a low in 1962. And then it made a higher low in 1971, although it did give back a good, you know, a good chunk of that gain in the 1960s. But silver's move, again, that didn't really start. That started in the early 1960s. So silver and the gold stocks are telling you that there's no 30-year cycle here. And the second thing is when you're looking at these cycles, I mean, you're only looking at, when you're looking at the 30-year cycle, you're only looking at a couple of data points here. It'd be one thing if you're looking at a you know four or five or six year cycle and you know boom 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 this has happened you know I still wouldn't care about it personally but that would at least give it some credibility here you're just looking at well it happened in 1970 then 2000 you know you had the the the, the peaks in 1980 2011 I mean that that's not enough those are not enough data points to give credence to there being a 30 year cycle. Especially when, again, you look at the rest of the precious metal sector, the major lows and the major moves in that first secular bull market started around 1960 and not 1970. So, um, you know, I, those are my views on that. Now, getting into some other examples of cycles, and, and you'll begin to see, you know, why um, cycles are completely subjective and they really have no predictive value in my opinion and until that's the other thing until after the fact i mean notice that it's after it happens people then point to the cycle saying oh well that was the low right there so there's really no predictive value in my opinion in most cycles now uh, i like the work that james flanagan does again global financial um you know some of you probably subscribe to him or on his email list he does uh send out a lot of free well, not a lot, but, you know, occasionally he does send out uh, free video updates. Uh, he tries to get you to subscribe when he thinks there's a major move that's about to you know, happen in the you know, broad market or commodities or gold and gold stocks. So he does a lot of work on gold and gold stocks. So the 30 year cycle guys is telling you, OK, gold and gold stocks, they're effed until the end of this decade. The bull market, secular bull market is far off. Well, I mean, I, and I followed Jim, James Flanagan for you know, probably at least a decade. He has a pretty good track record. I mean, nobody's perfect. But he has a pretty good track record. And he loves the W.D. Gone cycles, the 90-year cycle, also the 60-year cycle. He calls, he calls it the great cycle. And based on that cycle, he's saying the gold stocks are going to repeat what they did in the early 1960s, which, I mean, you could go, that was a hugely significant move, a super bullish move. So here's a 60, here's a guy talking about the 60 year cycle. This flies in the face of what everybody's saying about the 30 year cycle, because he's saying the 60 year and also the 90 year cycle, that that's more important than the 30 year cycle. It, by the way, you know, I, th I think WD gone, he's one of the biggest cycle technicians, you know, of going back in history. And so James Flanagan follows that really closely. I've never heard him mention anything about a 30 year cycle. Okay, so you know, here are some examples of cycles you don't hear about because they, they failed. And, I, and I, I can tell you, I used to hear about these cycles a lot. The four-year cycle, this was a really big deal for the stock market in the early 2000s. Like a really big deal. You can see all the arrows there. Look how perfect, look how beautiful the four-year cycle in stocks was working. You know, going back to at least the late 1940s. I mean, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, oh, over 10 arrows there. But because it's subjective, it just suddenly stopped working after 2004. Or was it 2002? Yes, after 2002. So after 2002, 2006, there wasn't really a significant four-year low. 2010, 
No, not really, because the low, the major low was in 2009. Uh, 2014, you could see back to, you know, 2018, there was a little sell-off there. But but you get the point. I mean, nobody talks about the four-year cycle anymore because it just stopped working. That's what happens with these cycles. Here's another one. I mean, this was big. What year are we? 2022. Okay, this was really big four or five years ago. You know, after, after you know, gold had made that first pop, um, you know, and then it had a, a sharp correction, but it was stuck there. It didn't make a new low. The low was, you know, was trading around 1200 or whatever. So cycle guys are saying, well, look at this, look at the U S dollar. There tends to be a major peak and decline in the U S dollar every 16 years or so go back to late 1960s, mid 1980s, 2001. Okay. Well, the next one is going to be 2017. And you can see, I mean, this, I don't know when this chart was published in 2020. And, you know, you can, it, it, it looked like a top was in there. So this cycle was telling you that the major top was in for the dollar and it was headed for a structural bear market. We all know what happened. The dollar shot higher this year, went up to 115. Okay. So that's another cycle. Po- another popular cycle that failed. Okay, and here's one. I've talked a lot about this, the you know the eight-year cycle for gold, which is now a seven-year cycle because it stopped working. Um, and you know, here I've 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 uh, I show a vertical line here marking all the lows. And um, look, we can see. Look at the time between these cycles. It's not a perfect eight years or seven year. I mean, some people are calling it the seven and a half year cycle now, but it's interesting if we look at what happened since, well, first of all, here's one thing. So you have a perfect eight year low after 1993, you know, early 2001. Okay. But what about gold's low? Gold's low was actually in 1999. So there was a double bottom there. Fine. But gold's low was actually in 1999, the low price by a couple dollars. And if you use the gold stocks, the gold stocks, uh, that low was about seven and a half years because they bought them before gold. So that's a big difference, you know, going from 8.5 years between the lows to eight. And then the next one, if you think about gold stocks, 7.5 years, then if you use that 2001 low for gold, the 2008, that was seven and a half years. And then the late 2015 low, Okay, that was about seven years plus a month or two. And, you know, this recent low for gold, um, you know, that came in, I think, a month or two, depending on if you use daily or weekly. Uh, that came in at 7.0 years minus a month or two. So, I mean, w- what are the cycle guys going to do? Are they, they can either say the low came, the low's already happened, it just you know, it just came before, or maybe they'll just wait a year or wait six months to 12 months. And then I'm just going to wait. And then if gold, you know, prints another significant low, I'm going to say that was the low. I mean, there's no, there's actionability. Is that a word? Like there's no actionability to that. Like this is all subjective and just pointing it out after the fact. Now, you know, precious metals are correcting a little bit now. You know, if we get a higher low in gold, like let's say gold goes back to, you know, 1685 or 1700, you know, and then that becomes, you know, a more significant low, then the, (coughs) excuse me, then the seven or eight year cycles guys, you know, they'll say that was the, um, you know, that was the low, like that second low was the real low. Um, So it came, you know, 7.2 7.2 years or whatever. So, so it won't be 6.9 years. I'm just drawing an example. Okay. So let's go to what I think this is really the number one cycle that to me, this is the most important cycle and that matters the most far more than any of these other cycles. Okay. And that is looking at the connection between secular cycles in gold and commodities versus the stock market. 
And so I have the S&P there at the top. I have gold at the bottom. And, you know, the red arrows basically mark when the opposite market peaked. So let's start with the S&P 500. You can see the red arrow in 1951 after the S&P had a major breakout. That's when commodity prices peaked. Next one, commodity prices peaked. You know, gold peaked in 1980. I think the CRB peaked in 1981. Stock market, you know, you can see there what happened. Go back to 20 or, yeah, from here, go back to 2011. Commodities, gold peaked then. And less than two years later, the S&P broke out. So you can see what happened after to how the stock market performed after commodities peaked. I mean, they basically were in the early stages of a secular bull market. And so if you go down at the bottom, it's the same thing. You know, when this around the time there's a secular peak in stocks, that's when gold and commodities began a secular bull market. You know, 1929, secular peak in stocks. Uh, go back to 1968, that was a secular peak in stocks. Look at how gold performed. We all know how commodities performed at the same time. Then the next peak, the next secular peak in stocks, 2000. Look at what happened to gold. And so this is what I'm talking about. I mean, I, I, this is what I'm talking about and writing about in my other work. And if we see in the coming months, the S&P break below its 40 month moving average, you know, we see this bear market continue and the S&P makes another low, a lower low. That's confirmation that the secular trends have changed and that the S&P and stocks are in a new secular bear market. And based on all this history here, that means commodities and gold are in a new secular bull market. Now, what will come after that is you'll see gold breaking out above you know, tw that base at 2050 or 2100. Maybe it happens next year. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think at the latest early 2024, but this is the secular cycle I mean, this is the cycle that matters the most. It's the secular cycle between hard assets and stocks. Okay, that's all for this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. And again, you know, I, I'm I'm not a fan of cycles analysis. I just I don't think it's uh, it's just too subjective. And as you can see here, I mean, there's a history of it just really having little predictability. But with all those things said, if you're using that kind of analysis and it's helping you and you're making money from it, then you don't need to listen to me. Keep using what works for you and what helps you make money. So I'll end on that note. Uh, thank you so much. And I'll talk to you guys again in the next video.